How you doing, everybody? I finally got a chance to go out and see the Peanuts movie, and I know I'm a little bit late on this, I apologize, but it came out the same weekend as Spectre. What do you want from me? So, nostalgia is certainly in nowadays, isn't it? It seems like every other month or so, some jackass in Hollywood is trying to cash in on something from our childhoods, and sometimes it ends up being kind of crap. Other times it ends up being complete crap. So it is so refreshing when someone actually gets it right. And boy, did they get this one right. This was so good. But then again, it was done by the family of the late Charles Schultz. So you would think they, of all people, would want to get this one right. And they did. You did, Charles Proud. You really did. There are basically two plots going on in this one. The first one involves Charlie Brown, and he has his first crush as the little red-haired girl has just moved in, and he's trying to get up the nerve to talk to her, trying to find ways to impress her, and all this and all that, and of course, failing at every step because he's Charlie Brown and that's what he do. And the second plot involves Snoopy chronicling his time as a World War I flying ace in his never-ending battles with the infamous Red Baron as he tries to rescue his beloved Fifi. Curse you, Red Baron. While the animation is CG, it does a very good job of paying tribute to the old cartoons that a lot of us grew up with. Still has very much the same look and feel, just updated. If you grew up with the Peanuts, then this has all the stuff you remember from your childhood. They did a very good job of capturing Schultz's sense of humor, both in the dialogue and also in the slapsticky moments. Whenever the adults are talking, they still sound like muted trombones. You still have things like the kite-eating tree and the ice-skating pond. There's a moment when the kids are singing Christmas Time is Here. It's brief, but it's in there. And just like the old comic strips, whenever Snoopy is fighting the Red Baron, you only see the top of his doghouse. They never show the bottom. I did spot one Easter egg in the movie. There's probably more than one, I'm sure, but one that stood out to me. When the little red-haired girl moves in, the name on the moving van is Mendelssohn and Melendez, who, of course, were the original producer and director of the animated shorts back in the day. If you grew up with these characters, they still act exactly like you would expect. Snoopy is still as weird as he ever was, still sleeps on top of his doghouse, still plays the World War I flying ace, and in one scene he even busts out his Joe Cool persona. Charlie Brown is still the perpetual loser that we all know and love, can never do anything right, but still remains optimistic in spite of himself, still very accident prone, still sucks at baseball, still sucks at football, but well... Actually, do we know he sucks at football? Because really, you know... For all we know, maybe he would have ended up being an all-star kicker if Lucy would just stop pulling that damn ball away. Who knows? And speaking of Lucy, yes, she is still a complete jerk and still an amateur psychiatrist and always on Charlie Brown's case. And in fact, there is a point in the movie where something good actually happens to Charlie Brown. And of course, she is in complete denial the whole time because she just cannot accept that anything good could possibly happen to him. Very funny stuff. Linus still has his security blanket, Schroeder still has his piano, and even plays the 20th Century Fox fanfare at the beginning of the movie. That was a nice touch. Pigpen still has his ever-present cloud of dust. That boy needs a shower. I could go on and on, but I think you get the idea. They nailed the characters completely. And despite the modern animation, that still seems to be set in the exact same time period as the original cartoons. There's not a smartphone to be seen. The landline phones all still have cords. Cords. Lucy's psychiatric help still costs five cents, so it would have to be in the same time period, I guess, because with inflation, it should be up to at least 50 by now. There isn't a video game console to be seen. If the kids actually want to do something fun, they go outside. Or, get this, they go to the library. Honest to God, library. It does have a few modern songs here and there, but that's really about it. Otherwise, it's still the same timeless stories. The voice acting was really solid across the board. Most of the characters, like the original cartoons, are all done by child actors, with a few exceptions here and there. For one thing, the adults are still done by a trombone. Wah, 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 you know. Uh, Fifi, Snoopy's love interest, is, oddly enough, voiced by Kristen Chenoweth. Not sure why they went that route. If you never saw her name in the credits, you wouldn't know it was her, because she's just making dog noises. She doesn't actually speak. 
Uh, it's kind of like Neil Patrick Harris and Clyde with a chance of meatballs. You never know it was him, but you know, nothing wrong with her performance. It sounded fine. And Bill Melendez is still the voice of Snoopy and Woodstock. Now, of course, Bill Melendez passed away some time ago, but they dug up some archive recordings of him doing Snoopy and Woodstock's voices and reused them for this movie, and it works very well. But I was really surprised by all the child's voices, because not only were they well done overall, but they sounded exactly like what I expect these characters to sound like based on all the cartoons I grew up with. I could have watched this movie blindfolded and I could have told you who was speaking and when almost all the time. Just very well done. I don't normally take the time to point out casting directors in these vlogs, but I'm gonna make an exception here. Christian Kaplan, you done good. Really, there is not much about this movie that I would change. They pretty much hit all the right notes. It's very well done. I think the only minor complaint I would have is that... Unless I missed it, I don't think they ever actually mentioned the little red-headed girl's name. Throughout the movie, she's just the little red-headed girl up until the very end. It even seems like Charlie Brown never even bothers to learn her name. Unless that actually is her name. First name little, middle name red-haired, last name girl. Maybe her parents were hippies, I don't know. But really, that's about it. I like this movie a lot. I can recommend it without hesitation. If you grew up with these characters, you're gonna love this movie. Even if you didn't, you should probably go see it anyway because it's just a really good story. And if you have kids and you want to introduce them to these characters, by all means, go right ahead. If the children that were in my theater are any indication, they're gonna eat this up. I did see the movie in 3D, and honestly, you can probably skip the 3D surcharge. It, the 3D doesn't look bad. It's an animated movie. They usually do it well, but it's not really necessary. You're fine in 2D. But one way or another, you should see this movie if you have not already done so. And that's all I have to say about the Peanuts movie. So, wah-wah, 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 wah-wah.